Thank you for coming tonight. It's great seeing you all. And thank you all for coming tonight. We appreciate that. Just a quick question. How many of you have never been to a council meeting? If you feel comfortable raising your hand. Great. So you'll get an idea of it tonight. Um, I want to introduce Kristen McConnell. She is our moderator for tonight. And I'll let her tell a little bit about herself. She's going to ask the questions. We uh, really appreciate council members coming. We have one missing, Ben Nicely, and he had surgery just a couple days ago, right? Just a few days ago. So he's recovering from that. Um, but we received, between last month and this month, we received 39 questions for council members, and we took a lot of time and took out the multiple questions, the same questions they asked more than one time, and there were quite a few questions that are Chuck questions. So what we did is elaborate the time or extend the time for Chuck, and he's going to take a little bit more time after you ask our uh, questions for the council members are asked. And he's got two special friends with him tonight that he's going to introduce, so you'll get to meet them as well. Um, so we wound up with 17 questions. We don't think we'll get through all 17, but they were sent to the council members a week ago, so the council members know the questions. They've had time to look at them and research them. And uh, we're looking forward to a very informative evening tonight. <coughs> so, one thing that I wanted to talk about is the folks in the room. Some of you have mentioned it. This is an exhibit that we just put up, and it's called Women in History. And it is put up for the arts celebration, arts communicate community celebration which will happen September 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th. And as I said, these are women in history and all the quilts were made to honor a certain woman. Like we have Betsy Ross back there and you can see the quilt looks like flags. And we have Amelia Earhart, we have Lucille Ball, we have Helen Keller, and some of the quilts have artwork that goes with the quilt. For example, example Helen's artwork is she typed a letter in her Braille typewriter. She has signed the letter, and the quilt is dimensional because she discovered the world with her sense of touch versus hearing and seeing. This one up here is Sojourner Truth. We have Harriet Tubman. So we have a whole variety of quilts, and if you get time, we'd like for you to come to the Arts Community Celebration, and they'll be displayed again during um, Fall Festival. And then in March, we have the maker of most of these quilts, Kay England, coming for a retreat. And then she, we are auctioning off all these quilts. She has donated them to the theater. So keep that in your mind, and we'll be telling you more about that. So um, without any other things to talk about, we'll introduce Chris Piston, and then we'll get started. Can you all hear me? If you can't hear, raise your hand. Everybody can hear me? Okay. So, I'm Kristen McCall. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I um, practice veterans law here in Clifton Forge. We set up practice at the end of 2021, and um, we're thriving more than I thought we would be. So, I was um, pleased to be invited to be the moderator tonight and look forward to hearing what town council has to tell us with all of our questions. So with that, because we're ready to start questioning. You turn the meeting over to Jeff. Okay, to Jeff. All right, so to you, Jeff. I'd like everyone to stand for the invitation by Shorty Wolfman and his Heavenly Father, we do not be glad to be here. We're glad you walked us up this morning. Well, I thank you for this council. I thank you for these people who come here to to what the concerns for this town are, that we may work together in uh, make this town possible. And Father, we thank you, Father. We just thank you, Father, that you love us and you love everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now call the meeting to order of Clifford Town Council Call meeting of 
August 17, 2023, for the purpose of participating in a community gathering, question and answer. <laughs> okay, now for the questions. So, um, I'm going to ask the council to introduce themselves when I hand you a question, um, and then you can ask the mic when you're done with the question. So, I'm going to start with you, then. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me let me ask the question real quick. Okay. Well, actually, introduce yourself. Okay. Do, you have a, do you have a mic? No. We do. Yes. Okay. So, go ahead and introduce yourself on the question. Could you just speak louder into the microphone, please? Sure. I'm Debbie Laudermill. Uh, I'm on town council and I've been there about a year and a half. Okay. So the first question is, given, given our current problem with vandalism, what strategies are being employed to address this issue? And what other additional actions do you recommend? Okay, I can tell you that the vandalism, we're all well aware of it. Um, it has been discussed with law enforcement, and as far as discussing strategies, I'm not at liberty to do that, but rest assured, we are taking care of that problem. I'm Dale Burdett. Uh, I just got elected my first term uh, on council. Uh, I spoke with Chuck about the vandalism at our local parks. Um, Obviously, police making their rounds and locking them up at night is one of the options. Uh, we also discussed, you know, obviously security cameras would be great, but is that within the budget? You know, maybe, maybe not. One of the more affordable options that we use in the county at some of the parks are magnetic door locks. So that they lock, you have them on a timer and they can lock, you know, when you want them to be closed and they open when you want them to be open. Jeff Irvin, uh, Mayor of Clifton. Uh, vandalism, with, like, like Dale, I spoke with Chuck and, and Chad. Chad is uh, stepping up the patrols and areas, or whatever works the highest. Uh, we are doing other things we have liberty to talk about. We, we're keeping an eye on the high areas, like, like I said, uh, vandalism. I, I myself think if you're whoever gets caught, I know Chad don't have anything or whatever, but the courts do. We need to we need to make sure they were prosecuted to the full extent where we can get out of it. That way, word gets around to the other kids, and hopefully it'll it'll stop. I don't think it's going to be an honest it'll ever stop. I mean, you're going to have vandalism everywhere, but the more the more we can get caught and convicted, the better I think it'll be. Shorty Wolf, a councilman. Uh, our church door got kicked in, but well, not in, I guess, still, so I didn't even bother with reporting it. Uh, we just fixed the door and went on, and, and uh, well, I remember mean, correct myself. When I say church door, the, ch the door on our outbuilding got kicked in before we could store stuff. Nothing was taken, it wasn't a whole lot to make it take, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's been on quite a bit of vandalism, you know, and, and I think it's uh, uh, children, teenagers, I don't think it's adults, I think it's just, just teenagers, children who, who are not, not uh, when you say discipline, am I saying it right, discipline? Yeah, so, you know, they, eventually they'll get caught, you know, so. About all I know about. I'm Chuck Monroe, town manager. I, I think everybody here knows me. But, uh, just to say about the vandalism, it is an ongoing problem. It's going to be an ongoing problem as long as we have uh, public facilities that we don't have staff at 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Police department is well aware of it. Uh, they're working hand in hand with our public works department who are in the parks more frequently than anybody to keep track of it. 
And the only thing that I'd like to say about it is, as, as quickly as we're made aware of it, we deal with it. We cover it up, we repair it, we fix it, uh, and then try to discourage it in that way. So it's an ongoing problem, but an ongoing effort to control it. Thank you all. So the next question, um, we'll start with Dale this time. Um, code enforcement has been a major topic in community gatherings since the gatherings began almost a year and a half ago. Improvements in enforcement have been made, but issues both in business and residential areas persist. Do we need stricter codes with more significant penalties? And if so, are new codes being written to address these problems and to ensure consistent and equitable enforcement throughout the town? I'll begin by saying I think that since I started running for council and we had candidate forms, it was a question that's always been asked about the codes. Um, since that time, Brad Church has been hired, and uh, Brad's done a pretty good job with code enforcement. and he's really stepped up the game, so I think the problem that I hear the most is, you know, why am I getting, you know, an enforcement notice while you're not getting this person, or there's still weeds growing downtown, and, and you have to take care of that, how do you write somebody? And I think we definitely need more manpower, there's no doubt about it, uh, to try to keep the public area <coughs> cut down. That makes it a lot more equitable when, you, when you're taking care of your own yard, so to speak. It's a lot easier to send out a notice of you know, making people follow the code at home. Um, we discussed the penalty for vagrant and vagrant policies, but I don't think that's been put in the force just yet. Chuck would be much better at answering that. Uh, my, myself, I don't think uh, codes need to be any stricter. I don't think we can get much stricter now. Since we, we, we revisited all of us and we have went by Chuck and Brad and the law on the new, the new way we're doing it, uh, I think that's going to work. We have a little time, give it a little time, I think it'll work. Uh, it's, to me, it's a lot stricter than what it was. We don't have to deal with the courts as much, but I don't think we need to be any stricter. But, you know, if we, if we see this and it's not working, council can always go back and revise it, you know, at a different day or time. But I think right now they're, they're fine. We just need to be given a little time and let Brad do his thing, and, and after a while, it'll work itself out. Well, um, you can write all the code you want, but if the court system doesn't enforce it, there's nothing you can do about it. You know, the, I, I heard one of the stories where the judge asked this fellow how much time he needed to clean up his mess. He said, two weeks. He said, well, I'm going to give you two months. What can we do if, if the court system doesn't enforce our policies when we take them to court? You know, uh, I know the farm right up here on Ridgeway Street. He's part of my family. And every time my wife rides past her, she said, why do they allow him to leave the farm animals in here all the time? He has a farm up there. <laughs> uh, you know, but you know, I don't know what the answer is when, the, when you do take them to court and you're so lenient on prosecuting. If I could, I'd like to piggyback one of the questions that was specifically sent to me on this one. Is that, is that okay, Chris? Mm -hmm. Why is code enforcement not consistent all over town? Some areas seem to go unnoticed while others are noticed on a regular basis. First of all, just like vandalism, code enforcement is an ongoing issue. As long as people are here, there's going to be an ongoing issue. Not everybody lives by the same standards and the same levels of respect for each other as probably most of us do. So it's how we manage that. It's a management effort is, is what I see that as. And I actually went and talked to Brad about this. And he assured me, and I believe that he is accurate on this, that he tries to cover all the areas of the town, uh, constantly running into obstacles, absent owners, 
incorrect or unupdated GIS information, which complicates the notification process. And most of the time, a very non-supported court system, which Shorty alluded to. I'm asking to actually be more diligent to cover all the areas of the town and again work with Public Works and the Police Department because that's just more eyes on the street to let him know when there are violations that he needs to deal with. Just to give you an insight into how a day in code enforcement goes, uh, Monday morning, I had been in the office 30 minutes and a lady came to the door and the first thing she said was, your code enforcement person is out of control. He needs to be reined in, and he's too nitpicky, and he's too overbearing on enforcing the case. Direct quotes. Not 30 minutes later, another person came through the very same door. Your code enforcement guy's not doing his job. He's not enforcing any codes. So it's really a no-win situation. We just have to manage it the best we can. If you get a letter from the code enforcement, don't take it away. I got three. I'm going to count Grass too tall. If your grass is six inches or better, he will send you a letter. He sends it to you know, He's just doing his job. He's not nitpicking across your grasses. You know, I might have been one of them whining to Chuck. Okay, with regards to do we need stricter code enforce or stricter codes, um, we actually did just that recently here in the last several months. We amended the current codes to make them more strict. And as far as enforcement, as Chuck says, enforcement is an ongoing issue. This, we will never make everybody happy. And know that this process takes time. We know we have a lot of properties out there that need a lot of attention, but these things take time. We do have limited resources. But we did just revise this, the code to be more strict, so I don't see a need to do that again. Not any time in the very near future. Okay, Jeff, you get to go first this time. Um, so the next question is, our town lacks many of the retail offerings of larger cities. People who move here, and many people who have lived here all their lives, are disappointed with our local grocery stores. Our Kroger has limited inventory, both in quantity and variety, compared to the Lexington and Botetourt Kroger stores. There are also cleanliness and accessibility issues. What actions is the town taking, or what actions would you recommend it take with Kroger to improve the store? Well, like Kroger, there's not much we can do with Kroger. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know if it's a franchise, but whatever, it's, it's owned. Uh, the only thing we have, as my time on council, I think Gail was on council at the time, I think that the, we went and said our, uh, what we would like to see, what we wanted, and it, it didn't fly. I mean, a uh, guy owns the, the land, uh, the Kroger owns the build, the stores, the, the franchise, it's, it's just not much we can do. Uh, my big question with Kroger, and it would have helped a lot, is when we were going to cancel, what happened to the fuel pad? We were all set for that, it was coming. If we'd have had that fuel pad, we would have had a, a nice, new, beautiful Kroger. I just like to know what happens if you pay and I like to, for Kroger to answer why they all of a sudden. We were right on the verge of that and it was on the table. We looked at the, um, all the plans, all the engineer drawings and everything and then a week later they canceled. I would like to know what happened to that from Kroger's. I never heard. That would have helped a lot. I just left them out there because I heard a, I heard a rumor that being the Chinese restaurant was, was shut down that they were going to expand more out into that building. I didn't get that answer. The manager, well, there wasn't a manager there, and the lady I talked to told me she couldn't answer that. So we may be able to find out at a later date if they're planning on expanding the store. But, you know, I don't know where this question come from, but. I'm just glad we got a Kroger store. Because I do not, I do not want to shop at Walmart. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, you're blessed to have Kroger's here in this town, right? And uh, I don't know if it's Kroger's is, but I know Kroger's and Covington is a unionized store. And if you're a union, you should shop union. Okay, as far as the Kroger's, 
open stores that started here at Clifton, um, it, it serves more people than we think it does. It serves a tremendous amount of people from Douthat uh, that come in here every year. You go out there on any given weekend and there's trucks and cars uh, with Douthat stickers. But I think the biggest problem, and I, I don't have a solution for this problem, but I think the biggest problem that we have in this town with the, the condition of our grocery store is no competition. Mm -hmm. yeah. They're the only game in town. There is nobody to hold them to a higher level of standard. There's nobody to say, okay, the store is dirty, the shelves are on stock, I'm going down the street to what we used to go to, the A&P, or a food line here. So there's no competition. If we had another, not even a, a huge chain grocery store, but a small, locally owned grocery facility, I think you'd see some great changes in that. So Kroger, um, I think most of you know I'm a retired Virginia State Park Ranger and I lived and worked at Dalvin for two and a half years. I think that Dalvin keeps that place in business. I know a lot of us here are either shopping at Walmart or at Food Line because the store is cleaner, well, more well organized. But understand that Kroger is a private company that rents a building from a private landowner. We have no control over that. So if, to me, and I don't mean this to sound the way it's going to sound, Kroger is a camp store on steroids. And it, it works for those of us who live here who just need to go pick up a few things, but for your overall grocery shopping, I know it's not a huge, hugely pleasant experience, you can't get through half the aisles, but unfortunately there's not a whole lot we can do about it. Um, believe me, we're looking, looking into options, but there's, right now, there's nothing we can do about the actual Kroger itself. Before I talk about Kroger, uh, I kind of answer some other parts about it. The, the initial part of the question was, you know, we don't have a lot of other retail offerings. You know, I've heard people say, you, you got to go to run up to buy shoes or clothing or sporting goods or whatever you need. You know, I really think that the retail environment has changed dramatically. You know, even in Clifton Ford, Virginia, you can order on Amazon. You know, and I think that's what that really drives out the mom and pop shops from opening up in downtown. So it's, if you're gonna open up something new, it's gotta be something that's differentiated from what you can order online. Um, as far as Kroger, everybody knows Kroger's, the parking lot's on a hill, you can't sit your buggy up, you gotta walk down the narrow hallway to even get, there's so many changes that could really improve the store that we have. My worry is, you know, if you start trying to put a lot of pressure on Kroger's, you know, like, like Shorty said, I'm thankful we have a Kroger's, you know, and, but if you, you start putting pressure, who's to say, they say, okay, if the location's not good, maybe we'll go out and buy Jerry's land and just leave town. Do we lose tax dollars then? Uh, or maybe they build it by exit 27, you know, where the motel is. You know, I, I don't know what kind of pressure that Kroger's would respond to, to to leave Clifton, but I'm thankful we have them. Um, but it'd be nice, uh, I know the owner of that property is aging now. Uh, it, it's still owned by the same person. I thought he's, you don't know who the next owner's going to be. So I'm just praying that whenever the change of hands happens, uh, I'm not wishing any paper to die, obviously, but I'm just saying, when it does happen, um, hopefully it's somebody we can work with, you know, that'll make some improvements. You know, and you remember it with that site, though, with all the parking being on the hill, everybody's had that struggle of trying to balance a, a buggy and, Trying to get your groceries in the vehicle. It's tough. So. That's all I got. 